the hottest show on TV on Thursday night, surprisingly, wasn't Isi Dingo, Generations, Sieben Alan, or Isi Baya. Today we cannot fly to Teben because there is a minister who is making sure that SAA is dysfunctional. Point of order. Today we sit here with a minister can, can that is can, working for white monopoly capital, making sure that the state-owned entities can go please. to his friends. Point of order. We call Point of for order. an adjournment Point of order. that the president must go outside and make sure that he makes an announcement to the nation Point of order. Can you please that Ravine Godan is no longer Point a minister order. of this country. We cannot speak with him. All the high drama you would associate with your favorite soapy or telenovela took place in South Africa's highest legislative body. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we have uh, a murderer in the house. We have uh, a man who's got blood of innocent people in this house, which is supposed to represent the wills of our people. And therefore, it is incorrect for you to have extended an invitation to declare it's an unrepentant apologist of apartheid who is not willing to accept that apartheid was crime against humanity. And I therefore suggest, Honorable Speaker, that we please request the clerk to leave this house because it doesn't belong to this house. And that's where we find ourselves this week on The Story. We are at the center of the EFF squabble with President Cyril Ramaphosa. I am Rian Krobler, News24 Senior Desk Reporter, and I'll be anchoring this season of the show. You're listening to The Story. It's a new podcast from News24. We'll speak to journalists and experts about the week's biggest story. This is what we saw, heard and uncovered this week. We have in our studio News 24's assistant editor for Fast News, Sheldon Marias. Sheldon, hi drama at Parliament on Thursday. Hello, hello Rian and uh, yes, thank you. Um, well, we burnt the midnight oil. You know, we thought those those late night sonas had stopped with, um, you know, Jacob Zuma's administration. But here we are, Cyril Ramaphosa's fourth administration and, and unpacking how it all unfolded. We expected some sort of high drama. The EFF for weeks had been uh, threatening to disrupt Sona if, if Cyril Ramaphosa didn't fire Pravin Gordon before his fourth Sona speech. So we expected some fireworks. But it actually started off on a different turn. Still fireworks, just focused on the different person. It wasn't Pravin Gordon, no. It wasn't Cyril Ramaphosa, well not directly. It was one F.W. de Klerk. And why, you may ask? Well, the EFF has never been really been a fan of the former president. Uh, it calls him a, a, a president with blood on his hands. And it believed that he, as the last apartheid president, shouldn't be in a democratically elected parliament. You know, they said, um, specifically Julius Malema and, and his deputy Floyd Chivambu, saying this man was never elected by all South Africans, only white South Africans. And that was where the high drama started. I don't think anyone expected it to be centered on F.W. de Klerk. And there he sat in the gallery and, you know, I, I suppose through his years of training on how to deal with difficult situations, he sat there stoically, his head down at times, or he would look up, but not much of a reaction from him in, in any way, you know. Um, and Tandi Modise was the one who was was taking the, the, the fire as such, and she was quite firm and she made it clear that this was going to be her show. And that's where it all started. Sheldon, do you think the EFF's antics are getting tired? You may not like their politics, you may not like what they do, but they have a lot of smart maneuvers to keep themselves in, in the conversation. And I think a party of their size wants that. You want to be spoken about. You remain part of the conversation. A party like the ANC will always be a part of the 
the, 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 the conversation due to its size and the fact that it's in government. You know, the DA will always be there because they're the opposition party. So they're often speaking in opposition to the, the, the ANC party like the EFF may not have the resources that the other two parties have so they need to find ways to remain part of the conversation and now they've taken that and now they are part of the conversation but could this be the last kick of a dying horse i don't think it's it for them i think they'll find another way to remain relevant some people may yawn so you know the shock factor is no longer there as it was under jacob zuma um, but some people will still view it as, as, as um, you know, them leading a cause, them taking up the fight for people that feel that apartheid is still something that we are living with. And it's, it's, it's legacy and it's remnants um, is what we're living with. And that someone like de Klerk should never enter the House of Parliament because he was an apartheid uh, president elected only by white people. You know, this is a very different parliament in which the presidents who are there were elected by all South Africans. Now, let's get into President Cyril Ramaphosa's speech. What were the first impressions? I think there was a, a lot of the speech which felt like it, 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 it was, you know, his speech that he gave in June when he officially became president, elected president, you know, and had a, had a stronger mandate. It left one feeling as if, hang on, I've heard this before. So he spoke a lot about Eskom, which he had to, for the economy, for people's daily lives. Um, so there was a lot on Eskom, which you had to be there. He would be foolish not to, have met, uh, not to have focused on Eskom as much as he did. There was a lot on SA as well. But, you know, SA is in the hands of business practitioners. The country actually can survive if we don't have SA. You can't survive if there's no lights from Eskom. So there were a number of developments there. Uh, municipalities will now be able to buy power from independent power producers. That may mean power that is cheaper. So hopefully that trickles down to the people who live in those municipalities as well. Um, you know, he went very, very big on education, which, st which stood out for me. A number of TFED colleges coming up, new ones. We're having a new university in Ukuruleni, student accommodation, which falls into housing as well. So if you look at that, I was quite surprised that he, he noted a lot, of, a lot of those. And then, obviously, what would a Cyril Ramaphosa speech be without his, 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 um, his new age city? Last year, he dreamt about it. This year, he gave us a glimpse. He told us a location. So now we at least know it's in, in Lanseria. Okay? Lanseria, for those who don't know, is on the outskirts of Johannesburg as you're heading towards the northwest. But do we need another city? I don't know. When we've got cities and we just need to make those cities work better. Can we even power a new city? Well, at current rates, we can't even power the cities we have. But anyway, that's the, that's, that's the president. So your overall impressions are simply summed up as same old, same old. Rian, not, not much to be inspired about, to be honest with you. The president initially looked tired. And I mean, just the way his, his, his fourth, um, you know, sona started, one would think, geesh, you know, how's he, how's he still standing? But the thing is, he has to continue standing because the country's certainly not standing. And that is a big problem. Very quickly, what are some of the things that you think you could have focused on a bit more? I think health is a key area. So as much as he went really strong on education, what are we doing around health? Medical negligence claims remain in the billions. The waiting times at our public hospitals. Um, and then you've got the looming specter of, of NHI. But he glossed over it as if it's like, oh, the people welcome it. Is this the end of the honeymoon phase? I think he's fast losing the leeway people gave him in the beginning. And I think more and more in the run-up to the speech, the messaging was, you're losing time. You, you're at risk of losing credibility. There are a lot of people who I think still have faith in him. I think it's also, who else are you going to put your faith in? Is the other reality that South African voters face. Who else are you going to place your faith in to turn the country around? You know, where are the options of strong, credible leadership um, to lead the country? Now we wait for implementation. It's all we can do. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you so much, Rian. It's been my pleasure.
We are going to call Jan Gerber, who is News 24's parliamentary reporter. Hello. Hello there, Jan. Morning, Jan. Jan, you had a front row seat at the State of the Nation address in Cape Town uh, uh, on Thursday evening. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your experiences, specifically the handling of the disruptions by the EFF by Speaker Tani Modisi? Did you do you think she handled it well? I think she she handled it exceptionally well especially com- compared to her predecessor. What she did basically was didn't give the EFF what they wanted, which I think saved the house a lot of embarrassment because it's not, you know, it's not ideal to have MPs thrown out by the bouncers, as we call them, because it, it just brings the whole event down. It, it's bad for democracy. It looks bad internationally. So I think she, she did a great job last night. Jan, among many of the EFF's demands and interruptions, they had a list of people that they wanted removed from Parliament, among them uh, former President and former Deputy President uh, F.W. de Klerk, as well as Public Enterprises Minister Parveen Gordon. You uh, had a seat on the gallery. Did you manage to see any reaction from either of them? It was difficult to, to see if de Klerk's reaction is was really far from the, the um, press gallery. I had a good look at uh, Minister Gordon. He, at first, when they started going at him, he had a little smile. And t- towards the end, when, when Malema had that little um, speech of his, and he referred to Gordon as Yamnandas, he just shook his head. Jan, will there be any repercussions for the EFF regarding their behaviour on Thursday? Um, yes, I, I believe they will be referred to the, the Powers and Privileges Committee to have a look at their conduct. A uh, lot of opposition MPs and I think some ANC MPs as well wanted to have their pay docked to, to, as, as a way to ensure that they don't do it again. I'm not sure if the rules would allow that to, for the speaker to just, you know, roughly um, subtract people's pay. But it, it could be an effect if if the whole disciplinary fr- process um, goes through. Rumour has it that public protector Busisiwe Mkwebane left early, actually even before Ramaphosa could deliver his address. Yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly when she left, but um, also I noticed that she didn't appear to stand when the, j- the judiciary entered the, the house. Jan, earlier this week uh, there was some confusion about the attendance of former President Jacob Zuma. Uh, eventually it was established that he was not attending owing to his poor health. But I believe the Zuma family was represented at Sona last night. Well, well indeed. Um, uh, Mr. Duzani Zuma was spotted in the public gallery. Afterwards uh, I saw him chatting to Gwedi Mantash and Jimmy Manye. Um, it's, it's unclear who invited him, whose guest it was. Jan, as far as Sona's go, what are your impressions of the 2020 state of the nation address i think it was a little bit better than both of his speeches last year but it still didn't come close to the tumamina speech in 2018 so it was a good try from ramaphosa but we still have a long way to go yeah jan thank you so much for joining us thanks the story is a weekly podcast by news 24 it is hosted by me rian hrobler and produced by Nokotula Manyati. For this and other stories, go to news24.com.